Hey there! Nowadays, North Korea has been grabbing a lot of attention, and people from all over the world are increasingly curious about its way of life. But let's face it, we're pretty in the dark about this place. Even if you chat with someone who's been there, you'll get all sorts of mixed reviews about life in North Korea. However, today, we've taken it upon ourselves to dig up some cool and lesser-known facts about North Korea. Who knows, maybe this collection will shed some light on what life is like there and how North Koreans go about their daily business. So let's dive into 17 weird things that only exist in North Korea. Number 17. Three-Generation Punishment Policy Indeed, the situation in North Korea is deeply distressing. Imagine a world where breaking the law doesn't just haunt you, but it casts a long, dark shadow over your descendants for three generations. This dystopian reality isn't fiction. It's North Korea's chilling three generations of punishment policy. The three generations of punishment policy and the countless human rights violations paint a bleak picture of life in this isolated nation. In North Korea, the three generations of punishment policy is a stark reality. Breaking the law here doesn't just affect you, but also your family for three generations forward. Absurd, right? Why in the world will I have to suffer for an error that has been passed down for years? The country's grim statistics include over 40% of its citizens suffering from hunger, while 20% of its gross domestic product is funneled into the military. Only a handful of Western tourists venture in each year, and citizens are segregated into 51 social categories based on their loyalty to the government. North Korea is widely regarded as the most corrupt nation according to the Corruption Perceptions Index. North and South Korea, despite sharing a history, are worlds apart today. South Korea boasts a thriving economy and remarkable development known as the Miracle on the Han River. On top of economic differences, there's a stark contrast in human rights records. North Korea's record is often considered the worst globally and condemned by international organizations like the UN and Human Rights Watch. Life in North Korea is characterized by bizarre policies. Government permission is required to use electricity, and Sundays are for collective labor. Residence in Pyongyang is a privilege determined by the government based on social class. The gravity of North Korea's crimes against humanity is undeniable. Zaid Ra'ad al Hussein, the United Nations High Commissioner on Human Rights, emphasized that the scale and nature of these violations are unparalleled in the contemporary world, demanding immediate global attention. Number 16. Blue Jeans and Western Clothing Prohibited North Korea's fashion scene is far from ordinary. It's a story of strict rules and political symbolism. It is amazing how strict government regulations extend beyond politics and into fashion. The ban on blue jeans and Western clothing is one such example. The regime, led by Kim Jong-un, enforces a unique dress code to maintain control over the nation's culture and ideology. Blue jeans and Western attire symbolize capitalist influences, which the government views as a threat to their Juche ideology of self-reliance. This prohibition is a part of their broader strategy to limit the impact of foreign culture and preserve traditional Korean customs. The ban on these clothing items is not only about politics, but also about social conformity. North Koreans are expected to wear clothing that reflects the country's ideology and values. While Western fashion can be seen as a form of rebellion, the government desires homogeneity in appearance. However, despite these restrictions, there's news that some North Koreans allegedly wear Western clothing secretly as a form of subtle resistance. These acts of non-conformity can have severe consequences, including imprisonment. The ban on blue jeans and Western clothing in North Korea is a reflection of the government's control over culture and an attempt to suppress foreign influences. Are you surprised at how something as seemingly trivial as clothing can be politicized in this tightly controlled regime? Well, that's North Korea for you, full of surprises and differences. Number 15. Iconic Traffic Girls of DPRK In the bustling streets of Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, a remarkable sight unfolds at every intersection. Here, the iconic traffic women take their stage, dressed in captivating cobalt blue uniforms, poised gracefully within pristine white circles. They are the living embodiment of this strange city. Beyond their mesmerizing appearance, these women hold a unique status, both revered by locals and adored by curious travelers. 
In the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, they've achieved an almost legendary reputation, with local men engaging in spirited competitions for their favor. This proves their undeniable beauty and elevated social status. However, there's much more to these women than meets the eye. To secure this prestigious role, they must meet rigorous standards. They are typically single, strikingly attractive, and notably tall. Their journey often begins at the tender age of 17, just after completing their formal education. Beneath the surface of their graceful choreography and directing traffic lies a story of unwavering dedication, relentless discipline, and relentless training. Through their elegant movements, they ensure the safe passage of both people and vehicles, infusing the city of Pyongyang with their radiant presence. In return, they earn deep respect and admiration from the North Korean community. Although this city is cloaked with many aspects of life and mystery, the traffic ladies stand as an open, captivating symbol of Pyongyang's mysterious beauty. They are more than mere icons. They are the sentinels of both order and beauty in the heart of North Korea, adding a touch of mystique to its streets. Number 14. North Korean Computing System and Internet The notion of going online in North Korea takes on an entirely bizarre twist. In a world where information flows freely like a digital river, this country stands as a stark exception. For its about 25 million citizens, the Internet is an enigma, a realm they can only dream of exploring. The lucky few who hold the key to the global internet in their hands are a minuscule fraction of this secretive society. These privileged individuals form a rarefied caste that's well connected to the world's digital network. For them, the internet is a window to the world, a portal through which they glimpse a reality different from their own. Yet, even their internet access is heavily curated, with access to websites and information closely monitored and controlled by the government. For the majority of North Koreans, even accessing their heavily censored domestic intranet is a distant dream. A controlled, limited space where government-approved content reigns supreme, this Orwellian cyberspace encapsulates the extent of the regime's power to keep its citizens in the dark. In this digital dystopia, the quest for free and open information becomes a mirage. The concept of Google searches, social media updates, and worldwide news feeds is as foreign as a distant galaxy. Really strange, because in a world where information is power, North Koreans are kept in a state of perpetual disconnection, unable to harness the potential that the Internet offers. Number 13. Caste System Based on Loyalty In this mysterious society, unlike any other existed, there wasn't a traditional caste system, but a loyalty-based hierarchy that defined every aspect of one's life. At the pinnacle of this peculiar structure were the Loyalists. The Loyalists basked in the glory of privilege. They had access to the best education, finest healthcare, and exquisite food. In return, they professed unwavering allegiance to the Supreme Leader, praising him daily, even through meticulously choreographed public displays. Beneath them were the waverers, those whose loyalty teetered on a tightrope. They strived to move closer to the loyalists, often reporting on their friends and family to gain favor with the regime. But the risk was palpable. One false move, and they'd plummet into the dreaded hostile category. The hostiles suffered the most. They faced surveillance, re-education camps, and forced labor. Their loyalty was questioned, and escape from this label was nearly impossible. In the heart of this complex society lived a girl named Su Jin. She was a waverer by birth, her father having once questioned the regime's policies. Su Jin dreamed of becoming a loyalist to escape the looming shadows of distrust. Her journey, filled with secrets, sacrifices, and dilemmas, would determine her fate in this loyalty-based world. Would she climb the ladder of privilege, or would she dare to defy the system, hoping for a better, freer life? What do you think? In North Korea, loyalty wasn't just a virtue, it was the currency of existence, and Su Jin was about to learn its value in ways she couldn't yet imagine. Number 12. Propaganda Village Have you heard about North Korea's fascinating propaganda villages? These meticulously planned settlements near the border with South Korea are designed to project an image of prosperity and success to the outside world. The most famous of these villages is Kijongdong, 
often referred to as Peace Village or Propaganda Village. Kijongdong is known for its striking features, like the giant flagpole, which holds one of the largest flags in the world. It's a village that appears to be thriving, with well-maintained buildings, electricity, and even synchronized patriotic music blaring through loudspeakers. However, it is widely believed that few residents actually live here, and the village serves as a facade. Propaganda villages, like Kijongdong, are designed to create an illusion of prosperity. They are intended to showcase North Korea's strength and development to the South and the rest of the world. Tourists and journalists visiting the South Korean side of the border can often see these villages with binoculars or telescopic lenses, and they have been a subject of intrigue for many years. These villages are just one example of North Korea's extensive propaganda efforts, which aim to maintain an image of self-sufficiency and power. However, the reality inside North Korea is often very different, with many of its citizens facing economic challenges and limited access to information. North Korea's propaganda villages like Kijongdong are carefully constructed to convey an image of prosperity and success. They serve as a symbol of the country's self-reliance, but they also raise questions about the stark contrast between perception and reality in North Korea. Number 11. The Ryugyong Hotel The Ryugyong Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea, stands as a symbol of both architectural ambition and economic struggles. The name Ryugyong itself derives from a historical term for Pyongyang, meaning capital of willows. This colossal structure, reaching 1080 feet, is often dubbed the Hotel of Doom due to its history of construction delays and abandonment. Construction of the Ryugyong Hotel commenced in 1987, but was marred by interruptions. The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, North Korea's main trading partner, led to an economic crisis, further hindering the project. The 105-story skyscraper has never hosted a single guest, in stark contrast to North Korea's functional hotels in Pyongyang. The Ryugyong Hotel features three sections that converge at the top, with an eight-story cone-shaped section designed for revolving restaurants, all of which remain uncompleted. External work resumed in 2008 under the management of an Egyptian contractor, the Oraskom Group. Completing the Ryugyong Hotel would reportedly cost around $2 billion, a significant sum for a nation with a gross domestic product of approximately $40 billion. In the meantime, the building has found other uses, such as serving as a backdrop for propaganda messages displayed on over 100,000 LED screens. Despite its ongoing construction efforts and minor signs of progress, the Ryugyong Hotel remains a mysterious and unfinished monument continuing to be known as the Hotel of Doom. Number 10. Unique Time Zone North Korea possesses a unique facet that sets it apart from most of the world, its own time zone, aptly named Pyongyang Time. Since May 2018, North Korea's standard time has been synchronized with Korea Standard Time, putting it nine hours ahead of Coordinated Universal Time, UTC plus nine. This adjustment was a noteworthy departure from the past when North Korea had its distinct time zone, separate from its southern neighbor. Intriguingly, North Korea, much like South Korea, does not adhere to daylight saving time. This means that throughout the year, the clocks in the Hermit Kingdom remain constant, avoiding the seasonal clock adjustments that other nations undertake. North Korea's timekeeping is meticulously regulated by the State Commission for Science and Technology, underscoring the state's control over even the smallest aspects of daily life. This centralized time management is emblematic of the country's isolation and the strong grip the government maintains over its citizens. The decision to align North Korea's time zone with South Korea's may appear as a simple adjustment, but in the context of North Korea's political landscape, it carries symbolic significance. It suggests a desire for unity or, at the very least, a diplomatic gesture to promote collaboration. The choice to share a time zone could potentially serve as a subtle bridge between the two Koreas, symbolizing the hope for a harmonious future. North Korea's Pyongyang time may be a small detail on the world stage, but it encapsulates the nation's complex history and its aspirations for a different future, one where time may bring the Koreas closer together rather than driving them apart. Number 9. Leisure Pleasure Squad 
hidden behind the iron curtains of North Korea, exists a leisure pleasure squad. What comes to your mind? The North Korea Leisure Pleasure Squad is a highly secretive and strange group in North Korean society. It's primarily composed of young women who are handpicked for their beauty, talent, and loyalty to the regime. These women undergo rigorous training in music, dance, and entertainment, and their main purpose is to entertain and boost the morale of North Korea's elite, including top government officials. The squad is known for performing at extravagant events, including state banquets, cultural festivals, and celebrations. They are often seen in dazzling uniforms and have perfected synchronized performances that showcase their talent and dedication. While they are celebrated for their skill, there is an air of mystery surrounding the squad. Little is known about the personal lives of its members, and they are often portrayed as symbols of North Korea's dedication to its ruling regime. In recent years, there have been limited attempts to reveal more about the Leisure Pleasure Squad. A few defectors and insiders have shared their experiences, shedding light on the rigorous training, discipline, and pressure the members face. Despite their glamorous appearances, they are under strict surveillance with severe consequences for any perceived disloyalty. Number 8. Ban on Foreign Media North Korea's ban on foreign media is a topic that sparks curiosity and concern worldwide. This reclusive nation's strict censorship policies have made it almost impossible for its citizens to access information beyond the state's tightly controlled narrative. The ban on foreign media in North Korea is part of the government's strategy to maintain an iron grip on the flow of information. Access to foreign films, television shows, and news is strictly prohibited. Instead, citizens are bombarded with state-approved content, glorifying their leaders and promoting the government's ideology. This isolationist approach has severe implications for the people of North Korea. They are isolated from global perspectives and lack access to accurate news and information. While smuggled foreign media does make its way into the country, the consequences for those caught with such material can be dire, including imprisonment. Despite these restrictions, there is evidence of an underground information network that continues to grow, fueled by the human desire for knowledge and the outside world. This underground movement risks everything to access foreign media, which offers glimpses of life beyond their borders. In a world increasingly interconnected by technology and media, North Korea's ban on foreign media remains an anomaly. It raises questions about the power of information, freedom of expression, and the lengths to which a government will go to maintain control. Number 7. Birthing Laws Childbirth customs are as unique and intriguing as the nation itself. While the secretive regime doesn't readily share its cultural practices with the world, some aspects of childbirth in North Korea have come to light. One distinctive tradition is the importance of the number. Three. North Koreans believe that good fortune is associated with the number. Three. So newborns are typically celebrated on their third day of life. On this day, family and friends gather to offer blessings and small gifts to the child. It's a moment of hope and optimism for the future. Gender reveal parties aren't common in North Korea, as the emphasis is more on the health and well-being of the child. However, a well-wishing tradition is for the baby's grandparents to choose a name, often based on historical or meaningful references. Childbirth is also considered a community event, and the entire village often comes together to support the mother and welcome the new addition. Traditional Korean clothing, known as hanbok, is frequently worn during these gatherings, adding a touch of cultural significance to the event. While North Korea's childbirth customs remain shrouded in secrecy, these hints of tradition and celebration reveal a glimpse of a nation with a unique approach to welcoming new life into the world. Number 6. North Korean Calendar The Juche Calendar, another window into North Korea's world, defies the ordinary and delves into an extraordinary realm of timekeeping. What kind of calendar is this? Imagine a calendar where history revolves around one man's life, the charismatic Kim Il-sung. This unique system, in use since 1997, is a testament to the nation's unwavering dedication to its founding father. Absurd, right? In the Yuch calendar, the clock doesn't start with the birth of a nation, but with the birth of Kim II Sung in 1912, celebrated as Yuch I. It's as if time itself bows to the presence of this iconic figure. 
Every year, every event, every celebration in North Korea is orchestrated to honor the legacy of this eternal president. National holidays, like the mesmerizing Day of the Sun, align with significant moments in Kim Il-sung's life. These aren't just dates. They're echoes of the past, rekindling the people's undying respect for their revered leader. The Yuch calendar weaves itself into the very identity of North Korea, shaping not only the dates on the calendar but the minds of its citizens. It may sound perplexing to outsiders, but the Yush calendar reflects a worldview where time is a canvas painted with the colors of a singular ideology. It's more than a mere calendar. It's a symbol of North Korean unity and allegiance to the great leader. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. In North Korea, the fascination of enlisting a good number of women into the military captures the essence of their unique military practices. Take a look at this snapshot of Korean women dressed in military attires. This image might leave you wondering, and that's precisely what we're here to discuss. Look at how weird these women's uniforms are with their open chests. Do female military personnel dress in such a manner? Well, North Korea itself is full of a lot of strange activities. The sheer number of individuals in the DPRK army is undeniably massive. The secret to this lies in their use of a practice called conscription, where until 2015, only eligible men were drafted for service. Meanwhile, women chose to serve voluntarily. But here's the twist. Significant changes have occurred. Amendments in the legislation now mandate military service for all North Korean women up to the age of 23. This shift in policy is intriguing. It raises questions about gender equality, the role of women in North Korean society, and the state's intentions. It's a topic that goes beyond military uniforms, delving into the complex dynamics of a secretive nation. What are your thoughts on this striking transformation in North Korea's approach to military service for women? Do you think it's a step towards gender equality or is there more to this story? We want to hear your perspective. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below and let's engage in a conversation about these unique aspects of North Korean life. Number 5. K-pop can get you killed. The authoritarian regime in North Korea continues to draw international scrutiny for its oppressive actions and the recent report of executing individuals for the simple act of watching or distributing K-pop videos is a stark example of this. According to human rights organizations, at least seven people have been put to death over the past decade, all under the guise of eradicating a so-called vicious cancer, as labeled by the country's leader, Kim Jong-un. This extreme response to K-pop's influence can be understood in the context of North Korea's strict control over its citizens, the regime perceives outside influences, especially those from South Korea, as a threat to its ideological control. K-pop, with its global appeal, has been gaining popularity even within North Korea, providing an alternative source of entertainment and a glimpse into the outside world. The severe consequences for enjoying K-pop not only highlight the lengths to which the North Korean government will go to maintain its grip on power, but also the power of cultural expression in transcending borders. While the international community has long decried North Korea's human rights abuses, little has changed within the country itself. This situation serves as a somber reminder of the fundamental rights denied to its people and the immense challenges in effecting change in such a repressive regime. As the world continues to grapple with the complexities of North Korea's actions, stories like these reinforce the importance of advocating for human rights and fostering connections that can bring about change. Number 4. No Religious Freedom North Korea is notorious for its extreme restrictions on religious freedom. The regime's primary focus is the veneration of its leaders, particularly Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, and Kim Jong-un, effectively creating a personality cult that replaces traditional religious beliefs. This has led to the suppression of any form of organized religion in the country. The North Korean government views religion as a threat to its authority, considering it a Western influence that could undermine the regime's control over its people. As a result, Religious practices are forbidden, and the punishment for engaging in any religious activity can be severe, ranging from imprisonment to execution. The few reported religious activities in North Korea are often underground and kept hidden to avoid detection. Those who practice religion secretly face constant fear and danger as they can be reported by informants, 
including family members or neighbors. The regime actively encourages citizens to report any signs of religious activity, further inhibiting the practice of faith. This lack of religious freedom not only infringes upon basic human rights, but also reinforces the oppressive atmosphere in North Korea. It shows how the regime tightly controls every aspect of its citizens' lives, leaving no room for personal beliefs or practices that don't align with the official ideology. Number 3. No International Calls Shrouded in secrecy, one striking aspect of this isolation is the absence of international phone calls. In North Korea, making or receiving international calls is nearly impossible for ordinary citizens. This policy is a result of the government's strict control over information and communication within the country. The regime of Kim Jong-un maintains a tight grip on telecommunications to prevent external influences from seeping into the country. The government operates its own state-controlled network, Coriolink, which offers limited access to international communications but is closely monitored. The average North Korean is not allowed to make international calls or access the global internet. This restriction has far-reaching consequences. It isolates the population from the outside world, limiting their exposure to different cultures, ideas, and information. The lack of international calls exacerbates the already limited flow of information and makes it challenging for North Koreans to connect with relatives or friends living abroad. Despite this isolation, some individuals attempt to bypass the restrictions using illegal means such as smuggling in foreign SIM cards or clandestinely accessing Chinese mobile networks near the border. However, the consequences of being caught engaging in such activities can be severe, including imprisonment or even execution. It sure doesn't feel great to leave in such a country as this, disconnected from the world. Number 2. State-Selected Haircuts and Fashion why will a nation present a distinctive perspective on hairstyling and fashion? Reflecting the authoritarian grip on its society, the North Korean government, led by Kim Jong-un, exerts significant control over its citizens' personal appearance. Haircut regulations are strictly enforced, with specific guidelines for both men and women. Men are encouraged to keep their hair short, with an ambitious style allowed only up to 2 centimeters in length. Women have a limited selection of state-approved hairstyles to choose from. These regulations are intended to reinforce traditional values and discourage foreign influences. In terms of fashion, North Korea emphasizes modesty and practicality. Traditional Korean attire, such as the hanbok, is often worn during special occasions, while everyday clothing tends to be uniform in style and color, favoring earthy tones. Foreign fashion trends are a rarity in North Korea, but they are slowly making their way into the country, particularly in the capital city of Pyongyang. This is evident in the increasing popularity of Western-style clothing, especially among the younger generation and the elite. However, the citizens must tread carefully between personal expression and conformity, as embracing Western fashion is often seen as an act of rebellion against the authoritarian regime. Number 1. The Sanction on Disrespect here, respect for the country's laws, leaders, and overall ideology is of paramount importance. Disrespect in any form can lead to severe consequences, highlighting the strict regime in place. North Korea's leaders, particularly the ruling Kim dynasty, are revered almost to the point of deification. Portraits and statues of the leaders are ubiquitous, and showing any form of disrespect, whether intentional or not, is considered a serious offense. Criticizing the government or its policies can result in imprisonment, forced labor, or even execution. The country's strict laws and regulations require absolute obedience from its citizens. Any transgressions, such as attempting to access foreign media or engaging in religious activities, are met with harsh penalties. The enforcement of respect extends to every facet of life. Even bowing to statues and monuments of the leaders is mandatory. Failure to do so can be reported by informants, leading to reprimands by the authorities. This level of control is often viewed with shock and concern by the international community, raising questions about human rights and freedom of expression. The strict sanctions on disrespect are not only a reflection of the government's authoritarian rule, but also a means of maintaining control over the population. The severe punishment of any signs of disrespect severely serves as a stark reminder of the challenging human rights situation within the country and the level of control exerted by the regime. 
Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.